From the pages of MikeHuckabee.com, home of the totally free Huckabee newsletter, which is delivered twice daily, let's take a look back at a big week in deep state news. You know the saying, you can indict a ham sandwich? Well, apparently, you can even open a counterintelligence investigation on one as well. The question now is whether we're going to see any accountability. Accountability for investigations that have wasted taxpayers' time and money. Not to mention ruining the lives of patriots like General Mike Flynn, George Papadopoulos, and many others. Unfortunately, I wouldn't bank on it. Remember when a FISA court rubber stamped surveillance on Trump campaign aide Carter Page? And it was all based on a dirty dossier slapped together by a former British spy who's been described as intensely politically biased. That dirty dossier was a mess of hearsay, gossip, and very significant inaccuracies. And what did the FBI do? They ran with it anyway. Now, far-left Obama administration lawyer turned blogger David Chris will supposedly oversee FISA court reforms. Who appointed him? Well, the same FISA court that obviously and objectively abused its power. So let's get this straight. An Obama-era anti-Trump activist who is called the deep state conspiracy theory is going to clean up the swampy FISA court. I think I trust the ham sandwich more than Mr. Chris and all these phony baloney investigations. All right, well, let's find out what's on your mind as we answer a few questions from our My Two Cents at tbn.tv inbox. We get this from John. He lives in Sacramento and he writes in regards to President Trump's strike that killed Iranian terrorist General Soleimani. Why didn't Pelosi or any other Democrat politicians say anything when Obama killed Osama bin Laden or when Bush killed Saddam Hussein? Well, the answer is they did say something. They said it was fine. It was wonderful. Here's the big difference between when we got rid of Saddam Hussein or when we got rid of Osama bin Laden. Everybody in those days celebrated America, and they didn't hate the president, be it George Bush or Barack Obama, so much that they couldn't even accept something good from the president. I personally remember well when Osama bin Laden was uh, taken out. I celebrated that and commended President Obama on national television. Why? Because I was proud of him for doing it. Maybe I didn't vote for him, but he was my president. And I celebrated the times when he did the right things, and that was the right thing. And I don't remember one Republican being opposed to the taking out of Osama bin Laden. Here's the difference between then and now. Today's Democratic leadership are so blindly and outrageously, irrationally anti-Donald Trump that even when he takes out one of the world's leading terrorists, they can't even find it to say, thank you, Mr. President. I only know of two Democrats, personally two, who have saluted the president for this. One of them is former Senator Joe Lieberman of Connecticut, and the other is General Wesley Clark, former Democratic presidential candidate and former head of NATO. We get this from uh, D, lives in Utah. He says, blessings, Governor, for all you do. Got a quick question. What is your favorite bass to play? Thanks again from Pastor D, who is a bass player as well. D, I wish I could tell you how many basses I have. It's several. I'm not sure my wife knows how many, so let's keep it that way. And when I'm passed from this life, my prayer is that she does not sell them for what I told her I paid for them. But you asked my favorite. Uh, I've got several, most of which are based on the platform of the Fender Jazz bass. And the one that you see me playing here on the show most of the time is a custom uh, handmade guitar made by Pat Williams in California, who made the guitars for Peter Cetera. Uh, Peter Cetera heard me play on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno several years ago, and he didn't think I completely embarrassed the instrument. And he sent me the nicest note for which I will forever be grateful and said, I wanna have my guy make a bass for you. And that's how I ended up with it. It's a treasure and it plays wonderfully. So I guess I would have to say that of all the ones I own, Tobias, Rickenbacker, several Fenders, a Dean, a Ventures model, 
that probably is still my favorite. Now, Harold from Wisconsin, he's not so happy. Here's what he writes. He says, Mr. Huckabee, I was watching your show January 11th. You ripped everyone that was not of a Republican stance. You, sir, as a self-proclaimed man of God, ought to be ashamed of yourself and the audacity of your audience to laugh as you made jokes about everyone in Hollywood to Colin Kaepernick to Ms. Nancy Pelosi. Wow, sir, it is no wonder so many people are negative toward Christianity. Well, Harold, I'm so sorry that I have uh, offended you and apparently some other people. Um, I say I'm sorry, honestly, I am who I am. I don't self-proclaim anything. I follow Jesus, I don't always do it well. Obviously, I didn't do it to your satisfaction and uh, I'm not sure that I ever would. But for you to say that I slammed everybody from Hollywood to Nancy Pelosi, I like to think of it as this, I simply told the truth and sometimes that bothers people. There's an old saying down south, we often uh, will say to one another, when you throw a hit, uh, throw a rock over the fence, the hit dog hollers. My experience is sometimes it's the hit dog that hollers, which simply means you must have been pretty accurate in what you threw. Well, we really do wanna hear what's on your mind, whether it's good or bad or indifferent. You can write to us at my two cents at tbn.tv and we'll see if your question or comment might just show up on the segment. Once again, that's my two cents at tbn.tv. And for my Twitter page at GovMikeHuckabee, a big shout out to Dennis Prager and his PragerU series on YouTube, where I hope you're watching them. They're great. He posted some sad and painful videos showing how the homeless in LA are filling the curbs and sidewalks with their tents outside homes and businesses in the city. Los Angeles approved, get this, $1.2 billion of tax money. Why? To build housing for more than 36,000 homeless people in their city. But as of the end of 2019, approximately only 1% of the apartments promised have even been built. Dennis Prager notes that the left-leaning politicians never ask themselves, what will our good intentions produce? Prager stated that the more you spend on homelessness, the more homeless you will draw. And that means more fecal matter in the streets, more verbal and physical confrontations with everyday citizens, more drug and alcohol abuse, and more homeless people dying for lack of proper services. The answer is changing the lives of the homeless, not making it attractive to be out on the street. Counseling, addiction help, job training, placement to get men and women off the streets and back to a normal life is certainly the better use of tax dollars. We should never forget the old adage, give a man to fish and he'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish, he'll never go hungry again. And finally, next time you're struggling with all the political fighting in DC and on the news, remember the simple political wisdom of comedian Bob Hope who said, no one party can fool all of the people all of the time. That's why we have two parties. Until next time, these have been the facts of the matter. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to leave a like, then subscribe and hit the notification bell below. Now, if you didn't like it, you ought to find a Ben Shapiro video to detox you with more facts.